All right, what's going on dudes and welcome to a new Minecraft snapshot, which also happens to be the first video I'm recording in the new condo. Oh man, it's like major life milestones and stuff. Hopefully the echo isn't too bad. The furniture seems to have helped a good bit, but I do plan on getting some acoustic foam panels in the future. For now, however, let's just get going. So we'll start off with a new flag you can add on to the give command in order to specify what blocks you want to allow another block to be placed on. So I'm giving myself a lever here and I've specified that I want to be able to place it on gold only. So let me give this lever to myself, this magical special lever. And when I hover my mouse over it, you'll notice it says lever can be placed on block of gold. So this applies to adventure mode only. Since I'm in creative, I can place it wherever I want. But let's go and game mode ourselves over into adventure here. And then, well, we can't place it on any of this grass or command block, even if I shift on it. But what we can do is if we hover over the gold block, it brings up the normal outline and I can place it down and open the door. Fantastic. So it's sort of like those adventure maps where they say uh, you can't place down blocks except a lever on, on a gold block, something like that, except this is like a, an official way to do it without anyone being able to cheat it. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, next up, we have a change to the AI mechanics of slimes, which allows them to swim. So Jerry is very happy now because he has an added ability and I'm still in survival, so I'm gonna get hurt. But you can now see that uh, if I knock some slimes back into the water, uh, some will swim. It's sort of like hit or miss whether or not they actually start swimming or if they sink. But uh, there we go, one's coming up again. Uh, I guess it does impact slime farms, but since a lot of them do end up actually sinking and drowning, um, you'll just have to, it seems like you can just put a boundary around the outside and then eventually you'll get your slime balls. So that is yet another change. Jerry is happy that he now has the ability to uh, swim in certain instances. Those guys didn't fare too well, but uh, others may be a little bit more lucky. All right, so next up, we have a, a couple added functionalities of, I guess, I guess these flags already existed, but now you can do special things with them. So I'm summoning, uh, this will be just a stone block here for our purposes. And these flags here are pickup delay and age. And what they specify is pickup delay, well, how long it takes before you'll actually be able to pick up an item when you're standing over it. And age specifies uh, how old the item is um, along the timeline to despawning. So right here, both are set to zero, so it's not actually changing anything. It's just as if I, I spawned a, a block of stone. Normally, no big deal. But over in the next one, I've specified I want the pickup delay to be this magical 32,767, which I guess is synonymous with infinity. Um, and what it does if I put that number in is it makes it so I can't actually pick up that block of stone. No matter how long I stand here, no matter how long I wait, it's gonna just despawn after five minutes and I won't have been able to pick it up. Next up, I've specified pickup delay is zero, but I've changed age to this magical negative 32,768 value, which again, I guess is synonymous with some sort of infinity. And now, and that won't ever despawn. I could stand here until the end of time and my computer would break before that actually goes away. Um, but if I stand over it, I can pick it up because I do have pickup delay set to zero. Over here, we have them both set to their infinity values. I can spawn it, and now this item will stay here forever, and I can never pick it up. So it's kind of useful if you say, I don't know, specified that you wanted to summon a certain set of tools, and you wanted to put them on display, but not have anyone be able to pick them up as to, I don't know, display like a class on a server for some sort of PVP thing. The only thing here is I couldn't figure out how to specify which particular item I wanted it to spawn. There is normally a flag that you put down here that's item uh, colon and then you give its ID and stuff. But for whatever reason, when I type that in, it would conflict with these two over here and the syntax was wrong, something like that. But I'm sure there's a way to do it. Anyway, and now I just have a an entity clear. So I just cleared those and I also killed lots of other things that happen to be around here. All right, so finally, this is actually really useful. Uh, let me switch back into creative here. And I have a barrier block at the first slot in my inventory. I actually have this thing surrounded by barrier blocks, but again, they're barrier blocks. So we can't see them until, oh, thank goodness. That is a very useful addition. So if we hold a barrier block in hand in creative mode, now we can see all of the barrier blocks just fine. It's kind of an interesting, like, it's like a rotating 
kind of, I don't know, textured dealio inside the block, but still it makes it very clear where there is a barrier and where there is not. Switch it out and have a downfall and uh, you'll notice all the barriers, they disappear. It doesn't happen instantaneously. They kind of fizzle in, fizzle out, uh, but that's how it works. So cool, instead of having like barrier goggles on your head, you just hold one in your hand, which makes even more sense. That's cool. Now let's move on to the final and coolest change of the snapshot. I actually have to reload in order to do this, so I'll see you in just a second. So right now you're you're probably just looking at these blocks like, what in the world is going on? Why do I have this giant multicolored Lego in front of me? And why do my command blocks have little hats on them? And oh, it's madness. So in this snapshot, Mojang added support for custom block models, sort of. I say sort of because you can't just go and make a a sphere in Blender or Maya or something and then take it into your game and oh, all of a sudden everything is, is a sphere. Uh, the way it works is you're now able to go in and edit a file which you can put into a resource pack and you can specify the vertices that you want for the edges of, of blocks. So this is a, a model that I actually got um, off of a, a post on Reddit, but you're actually able to, to go in and edit the file. It's like cube.json, it's inside assets, Minecraft, something inside your, your jar like that. And when you swap it out with a new resource pack, um, you can change the way the, the cubes look. Uh, and on top of the cubes, you can also specify like new models for torches and there are a whole bunch of other items you can do it for, or I, uh, blocks I should say. So here it just looks like I have Lego blocks, sort of, and I mean they place down just like normal blocks, I can place them down on top. Uh, it's actually really cool with glass, if I get that, um, you can see like the uh, the inside of the, the block inside of the glass block, and it sort of, it, it looks very Lego-y with this particular model. So the way the way it worked is that instead of just specifying the normal coordinates of 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, et cetera, et cetera, for all the corners, uh, the guy who did this added some more uh, vertices that specify more faces to be shown. And it's just weird, uh, but really cool. So you could do um, the whole, you, there are a whole bunch of opportunities to, to do cool block models with this. And because you don't have to add them to every block at once, um, it, it can be useful to even improve certain things. Like I, I saw someone who um, made the torch model actually, uh, I don't know, he did something that made it look very nice. Um, I, I didn't actually add it here, but yeah, pretty crazy. <laughs> Radical stuff, dude. So anyway, uh, that's about going to do it for this snapshot. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you have a rating, it would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.